Yes, he has fed her for four years, given her clothes for four years. This girl is a misfit. Because when she goes back to the village, she cannot even cook because there is no gas there. The poor parents who live in a shanty with no proper security, no door, they are living in daily scare that the girl will be taken out and raped. Somebody will take her, somebody will accost her. Parents who otherwise would work from morning till night, one of them will have to stay back. And at the end of the day, what have we done? We have made a girl, misfit for society, and a target for hoodlums. The next worst thing the parents do is get rid of her, marry her off. She's a liability. So, we have a 13-year-old bride. What happens when we have a 13-year-old bride married to a rickshawpula or a talawala? She becomes a mother at the age of 14 or maybe 15. There are all sorts of dangers of girls becoming parents at the age of 14 or 15. Physical as well as otherwise. So no education for the mother. The father is a rickshaw puller. And soon he will divorce her and she will end up in her parents' house with a baby in her arms. So, Honorable Chief Justice, I say, or I ask, what favor have we done for this girl? And the other scenario is that the girl is raped and she's pushed off the rooftop. How many cases have we seen of that? Have we not seen these cases? In the newspapers? We have seen many of them. The parents don't know where the children are. Because some other third party has taken them to the town or city for employment. They received their girl in a coffin. What benefit have we given them? So, what lessons do we learn? We talk about sustainable development goals. We did very well with the early on. But for these sustainable development goals, we have to have our act done properly. We have to have our children educated. We have to ensure that children go to school, stay in school, continue in school to further and higher education. Because otherwise, the future for these children will be bad. What happens when we have children who fall out of the way into criminality? We have snatchers, hijackers. And who do they snatch and hijack from? We have thieves and dacoits. Where do they go to thief and dacoit? To dacoity? In the house of the affluent. Our houses. We have to think about these things. Make sure that we put our children on the right path. So that they do not fall by the wayside and become criminals. The future of the country depends on children. The few of you here most of you will probably end up in America, Australia, Canada, UK, you name it. The world is wide open. Who is going to remain here? The children of that rickshaw puller. They are going to be running the country. 
they're going to be the voters. So, for empowerment, we need education. Education is an investment. I'm not an economist, but I think what I have said to you so far goes to show how education, investment in education, will help not only the children, the families, but the whole of the country in making this a better place. We in the Supreme Court have tried our best to, in the way that we have done by having these cases dealt with in such a way as to make sure or ensure the rights of children are implemented, the law is implemented. We cannot say that we have succeeded totally, but I think we have to a certain extent made people aware that children have rights. As much rights as every other citizen, and actually they have more rights than the adult community because of the fact that the constitution allows better laws and we have a specific children act to deal with them. You will all have children in the future, inshallah. You will all keep in mind what I have said, how to deal with our children. What we need is a change of mindset across the country so that children are treated better for our own benefit. We hope we can do better for our children in the future. Thank you all for your very patient hearing.